Hello ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed my previous series on the Queen's Gambit Decline Exchange Variation. Now we are moving on and we are going to talk about the Kali system. But we are going to talk about the Kali system uh, from a slightly different perspective. We are going to be troubleshooting the Kali system. Um, and what do I mean? It's uh, We're going to be discussing variations where, where black basically... Um, gives white the most trouble in the Kali system and uh, as a young chess player it was one of the reasons why I stopped playing the Kali system and uh, so we're going to get right into it right this is going to be another series where we're going to be looking at uh, different uh, variations uh, and it's not really to show whether the Kali system is good or bad but it's just showing you plans in the Kali system that you you can adopt. So um, this game is between Arthur Yusupov, who's rated 26-22 at the time, going against player um, uh, Tish Beric, who was 25-23 with the black pieces. This game took place in the Bundesliga League to, uh, 2002. So the game started off D4, D5, Knight F3, Knight F6, E3. Now, of course, for those of us who do enjoy playing the Kali system, there's two main variations here, right? Let's say after e6, you can play bishop d3, and let's say um, black just plays merrily along. You can play this variation, which is uh, c3, which is kind of like a reverse Slav, or you can go into this variation, which is known as the Zukatort variation, all right? Now, some of the main ideas in this opening is to build up uh, your position first. And so this is like a tension building position where, let's just make some moves here, where you're slowly building up for this explosive move E4 in the position. Okay, and then at the right time, you know, you're going to unleash your forces by playing E4, sometimes E5. And many times after you drive this knight away, let's say, let's say we were able to play a move like that. And let's, uh, let's play E5. And sometimes conditions get created on the board where you can play this typical sacrifice of bishop takes h7 followed by knight g5 check and then followed by uh, queen uh, h5 the reason why I show that um, little variation is to highlight the importance of this light square bishop in the Kali system um, the Kali system is akin to like stonewall variation um, where Sometimes the attacks and plans can be a little bit um, unidimensional. Um, and, of course, high-level players, uh, you know, are not going to be easily defeated by such direct attacking uh, schemes. All right. So it's not necessarily like the opening's bad. It's just that there's not enough, um, you know, things to worry about as the black player uh, whereby, you know, um, you know, to cause him, you know, any problems in the position. But I would say the most important piece for white in this system is the bishop on d3. So oftentimes black will just immediately uh, try to take over that square or take over that diagonal before black, excuse me, before white can even get his piece there. So here's an example. So in this game, d4, d5, knight of three, knight of six, e3. And instead of just falling into what white would like him to do is just block his bishop in by playing e6, many players to throw a monkey wrench in the college system will play the move bishop f5. And sometimes they will play bishop g4. We'll look at that on another video. All right, so now what do you do? Well, if you just play bishop d3, I mean... You just get your most powerful uh, piece traded off. So this is going to hurt a lot of players that love the Kali system. But if you want 
really want any type of chances as winning as white here um you're gonna have to kind of switch over to a queen's gambit okay all of the, the the top games when confronted by this position um pretty much will try to exploit the absence of this bishop from the queen side right notice this pawn is unprotected and the move c4 is played just as yusupov played here then c6 right maintaining the strong point in the center Knight c3 and now you're kind of in the uh, slav defense by transposition e6 and then yusupov here played knight h4 just going after the bishop real simple plan okay and that's what i want to um, stick to the emphasis on the plan all right so what do you do when confronted by bishop f5 you're trying to play the Kali system well what you do is you want to play c4 transposing in the slav and then after e6 is played locking this bishop then you can just go after the bishop here again not a big advantage for white very very slight advantage if you want to say there is any advantage just having the bishop pair and the slightly damaged a uh, pawn structure i mean this is the type of stuff you're going to get if you play this kind of opening it's not a you know it's not a um type of opening you're going to play and get a big advantage especially against a skilled player so bishop g6 you support kept developing knight bd7 bishop d2 and you might say why is he leaving the knight there well he doesn't need to capture right away i mean if at any time if black plays a move like h6 or h5 uh black's pawn structure will be ruined bishop e7 rook c1 castle and now finally after the king commits, Yusupov just grabs the bishop here. Again, nothing to write about here in the position. It's a typical position here. Now the fight begins for the e5 square. So queen c2 from Yusupov. And now bishop d6 from Tishberic. If he plays e5 now, it will be uh, premature. Because black would just, uh, excuse me, white would play c takes d5, c takes d5, and then queen b3, hitting both d5 and um, b7 at the same time. And e takes d4, e takes d4, and then this, the problem still uh, remains. So bishop d6, h3, because you have to watch out. Black has to watch out since he doesn't have like a knight here. He has to be extra careful, even though he has his bishop here now, but he has to be careful of attacks on this diagonal. Like bishop takes h2, knight g4 check, queen h4, etc. Although this bishop is here right now doing a great job protecting against that, those are the type of ideas that you have to watch out for. So h3 is played. And now rook c8. Again, if e5, c takes d5, c takes d5, and knight b5. So again, always with the the um the eye on the e5 square. Not allowing that pawn advance. So rook c8. Now, as soon as the rook comes here, you swap just simply close down a file. C5, attacking the bishop, the bishop goes back, and now f4. So now e5 can't be played. And this has the interesting effect of causing um black's pieces to be somewhat misplaced. After all. He's been playing to get this move e5 in for some time. He has his bishop here on d6. Now it's back here. This rook is has came to e8. To enforce that. The knight is here on d7. And now this rook is embarrassed because it came to um, c8 to enforce c5. So now all of white's pieces, excuse me, black's pieces are a little bit suspect. All right. Queen e7. Now bishop d3. This explains Black's dilemma. Explains the next move. It's a little panicky, but his dilemma explains the next move. G5. He sacrifices a pawn because he wants to uh, give his uh, pieces chances to breathe. So f takes g5. Knight h5. All right. So now look. All of a sudden, the bishop is open. Knight g3 is on the table. And it looks like uh, black has some life here. Yusupov 
attacks the center with e4 and it kind of forces um the continuation from black because uh e5 would be a big uh problem here so black plays e5 because that's why he sacrificed the pawn all right but after e takes d5 e4 bishop e2 now notice Yusupov did not play knight takes e4 knight takes e4 c takes d5 and let's say if knight c3 or something like that black is still worse but can start generating a little bit of counterplay d takes e5 queen takes e5 check he got problems on the dark square. See, for instance, knight g3 is winning. This bishop here, excuse me, queen here, bishop here in a uh, diagonal. So, the e4, Yusupov just ignores that and attacks the um, knight here. Knight g3. And now d6, very powerful move. Again, closing up the position, attacking the queen. Queen d8 and bishop c4. Very powerful move. Tisberic resigned. Why did Tisberic resign? Well, there's a double attack on f7. There's not really a clear way to protect f7. If knight takes f1, rook takes f1, and the double attack is on again. Rook f8, queen b3. Again, now it's a triple attack. And basically, white has too many attackers on f7. And he's attacking this... Um, pawn on b7 if queen e8 right defending again then g6 is nasty again there's no way to black just does not have enough defenders to take care of of f7 here and so this is why tisberic resigned in 22 moves okay so again what do we do if we want to play the Kali system and black spoils our plans with bishop f5 do we just give up and resign? No, we do not. We transpose into a Slav. We're not afraid to uh, play this uh, this different uh, system. So just to reiterate, Yusupov going after the bishop pair is just fine. And in the next game, uh, the next uh, I'll look at bishop g4, which avoids, of course, the idea of knight h4. <clears throat> knight h4 going after the bishop here and you see how simple um white's game is but very effective he won after all in only 22 moves so the key factors are to remember again to play c4 transposing into a slav keep an eye on the uh, uh e5 events from black at all times okay And just be and just be patient, okay. In the position, don't try to overrun. It's not a type of position where you're just gonna overrun your opponent. You have to be patient. You're not playing an aggressive opening, so you have to kind of take what the opponent uh, gives you. In this case, it was g5, okay. The cramp was getting so tight on the black position that Tisperic kind of um, lashed out with g5, looking for some counterplay, and it backfired. Why did it backfire? Because in chess, it doesn't. If you have a worse position, there is gonna, there is going to be no counterattack that's going to be effective. Okay, those those will always backfire because your position is uh, worse uh, by nature. So again, we're going to be looking at the Kali system again. We're going to look at other continuations that are annoying for a uh, Kali system players, like for instance, Bishop G4, G, early G6, right? Because after all, if you put your bishop on d3, you know, to play, you know, bishop takes h7 or what have you. And a person plays g6 going into, say, like Indian defenses, you know, you just want to throw your hands up, you know. So we'll be talking about those in uh, 
uh, upcoming videos. But until then, uh, please like, subscribe, and comment. Suggestions of other openings that you might want to see are very welcome. Check my links below. Please donate to my channel. That is very much appreciated. And also check the links for DVDs slash books related to the opening that you see on board today, which is the Kali system slash Slav Defense. And I'll see you guys on the next video.